Good morning, guys. Okay, so we're moving on to lesson number seven. Wow, you're like such... She's so on it. Hi, say hi to the peeps. Yeah. Oh, I don't want to cut her little hello ever. I know. Lesson number seven, guys. I see only the past. Let's find out why. I see only the past. I see only the past. I see only the past. This idea is particularly difficult to believe in at first, yet it is the rationale for all of the preceding ones. It is the reason why nothing that you see means anything, because you see only the past. It is the reason why you have given everything you see all the meaning that it has for you. I see only the past. It is the reason why you do not understand anything you see. I see only the past. It is the reason why your thoughts do not mean anything and why they are all like the things you see. I see only the past. It is the reason why you are never upset for the reason you think. I see only the past. It is the reason why you are upset because you see something that is not there. I see only the past. Old ideas about time are very difficult to change because everything you believe is rooted in time and depends on your not learning these new ideas about it yet. That is precisely why you need new ideas about time. The first time idea is not really so strange as it may sound at first. Look at a cup, for example. Do you see a cup? Or are you merely reviewing your past experiences of picking up a cup, being thirsty, drinking from a cup, feeling the rim of the cup against your lips, having breakfast and so on. What's up? Are you not your esoteric reactions to the cup too, based on your past experiences? How else would you know whether or not this kind of cup will break if you drop it? What do you know about this cup except what you learned in the past? You would have no idea what this cup is except for your past learning. Do you then really see it? Look about you. Look about you while I get this cat. What are you doing? What are you doing? No. Look about you. This is equally true of whatever you look at. Even this cat. Go ahead. Go ahead. Look about you. This is equally true of whatever you look at. Acknowledge this by applying the idea for today indiscriminately to whatever catches your eye. For example, I see only the past in this pencil. I see only the past in this shoe. I see only the past in this cat. No, I want to see what you. I see only the past in this hand. I see only the past in that body. I see only that past in that face. Do not linger over any one thing in particular, but remember to omit nothing specifically. Glance briefly at each subject and then one more, and then 
more on to the next, move on to the next. Three or four time practice periods each to last a minute or so will be enough. So four times a day today for a minute, look around and say, I see only the past. Kitty's on her this morning. Let's see. Now moving on to the hope book. <laughs> We have joy. The word of the day is joy. That's day six of this one. Joy is your natural state. Michael Bernard Beckwith said that. Joy is your natural state. Oh, she's pissy. Look at her ears. Why is your Why is your problem? We all know. Joy is often interchange with happiness conceptually. True. Okay, boo. Relax. Is your kitty cat self acting up today? Is your dog acting up today? Is it just my cat? What's going on? Joy is often interchanged with happiness conceptually. I see them as different experiences. In my life, I have been in a state of joy, yet not necessarily happy. Wow. Joy, I believe, runs deep within your being as a connection to all that is within, as well as without. Happy is feeling when a temporal experience elevates your mood and makes you smile or laugh. These ideas can coincide, yet may not happen simultaneously. How joyful is your life day to day? How joyful is my life day to day? How joyful is your life day to day? Hmm? When was the last time you slowed down and allowed your deep joy within to show up and brighten your day? Is your joy thermostat set on high? Question mark. <laughs> if joy is in fact your natural state, then everything that is not joy is an alternate state. Well, imagine how your world would be if more people connected with deep joy within. Joy, gotta reread that part, I believe runs deep within your being as the connection to all that is within as well as without. While well, happy is a feeling when a temporal experience elevates your mood and makes you smile or laugh. Do you agree with these? That's the other question. Today is a good day to let your joy come out of hiding. Imagine how your world would be if more people connected with their deep joy within. All right. The daily application for this is to spend some time in quiet reflection. Breathe fully and allow your inner essence and energy to rise to your awareness. Kitty! What are you doing? She's trashing the bathroom. Very enthusiastically with joy. I'm not sure if this would be happiness or just her wackiness. Let's see. Spend some time in quiet reflection. Breathe fully and allow your inner essence and energy to rise to your awareness. That's beautiful. Your inner essence to rise to your awareness. Color your world today with joyful thoughts, words, and actions. So what is meaningful to you inwardly? What matters? What is sustainable? What is part of who you're instinctually are at this point in your life? What make, what is, what is your joy? Your innermost essence. Color your world today with your joyful thoughts, words, and actions. And how do you translate it to, to thoughts, words, and actions? So your inner essence, I can see that translated to your thoughts. And if you're really connected to your thoughts, your inner joyful essence, your actions should pertain that. So how do you do that? Keep your joyful essence thoughts actively into your actions. Simple as you. <laughs> it's simple, but it's not. You, you, you have to... You have to. You find that sweet spot 
Lord, if you see a storm coming, you disconnect. <laughs> if people bring you things to your table and say, help me with this or help me with that, or this is what's going on, this is how I feel. We have to learn to just observe, I guess. We're going to have to, we have to work on this, guys. How do we keep our, our joyful essence in our actions and in our words? If somebody tries to make you responsible for something that you had nothing to do with, by God, we just have to learn to keep our mouth shut. Play the fifth. <laughs> Does this make it sense? Am I going to have to redo this video? I don't know. Anyone else there is feeling what I'm saying? Let me know. Breathe fully and allow your inner essence and energy to rise to your awareness. Color your world today with joyful thoughts, words, and actions. So if my inner essence and joy... My inner joyful essence, which I'm told is abundant and is often missed when it's not available. <laughs> I just want my happy Jeanette. Oh, there's a difference, isn't there? Do they mean my happy Jeanette or do they mean the joyful Jeanette? Well, I'm going to go with joyful from the description we have here. When she fluctuates, which I presume is what happens to you as well, because we're all very similar. What happened? Does it go back to boundaries and, and, and just, does it go back to that? It, it, is it, it's that middle path, isn't it? Life is interesting. How do we apply these things on a daily basis? Color your world today with joyful thoughts, words, and actions. As you go to sleep, smile and off, and offer gratitude for a wellspring of joy within you. <coughs> As I step into my day. Smile and offer gratitude for the wellspring of joy within you. So, first of all, there's that action word, smile. Oh, okay, fine. So, when we're, we're going back and forth and, and we're trying to abide to what everybody... Is presenting to you or offering up or maybe people just really need to be heard and 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 when it's our ego that involves us or specifically people will say well why don't you talk to so and so about this or talk so and so about that or well you know it's you're this or you're that um but did i bring it up no Did I set my boundaries? Did I ask permission for things before things happened? Yes. Did things go out of bounds and it became not my thing but something else? Yes. Then maybe I should just smile. And take the middle path and go, well, counsel people on what they're saying. on how they should go about saying it. But not make yourself responsible or allow other people to make you responsible for actually saying it when it's not your thing. I think we have something there. How do we stay in joyful essence? We stay on our path. And put all our focus in what our goal is. And if your intent and your essence is a joyful one, then that goal should be worthy of pursuing and sharing and being of service to the world. So what's your joyful essence? What's your goal? Personal reflections on that today. What is your inner essence? Inner essence. Which to me translates to the gift I have to offer to the world, which means I have to be worthy enough to pursue it. 
fully. Gun ho. Focus on that. Put the focus on making your innermost joy a reality. And maybe if we did that, we would so ultimately, overwhelmingly, be too busy doing and being to get our energies conflicted or confused or God forbid wasted in other things. That's a lot. This turned into a 15 minute video. My apologies. Sorry, not sorry. I hope that that helps somebody in some way. Now I have to go put some makeup on so people don't say I look tired. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna go at work at 9.709. Pray for me as I finally make my way to the gym today. Today's the day. I love you guys. We'll talk to you soon.